online courses, particularly online math courses, can be kind of hard for students. Unlike a face-to-face -face class where you've got three to four hours every single week where you have a social pressure to show up and an instructor there who's doing everything in their power to lay out appropriate structures for your learning, but in an online course, a lot of the pressure to do well rests on your shoulders. Now, I also really love online courses because unlike a face-to-face -face one where sometimes the instructor's going too fast or too slow or where you need to just sort of rewind for five minutes, in an online course, you can take things at exactly the speed that you want to go at. You can do the content when you're feeling most alert. You don't have to travel there for nine in the morning. You can make online experiences exactly tailored to what you need. So there's a lot of opportunity in online courses, but you have to do them well. So in this video, I'm going to talk about different strategies to succeed in an online course. The first thing that I think is the most important is that my core belief about mathematics is that mathematics is best learnt by actually doing mathematics. It's a little bit like juggling. Yes, you can watch all kinds of videos about juggling and maybe you'll learn a lot. Maybe you'll learn about proper technique and proper juggling patterns, but you have to spend a lot of time actually juggling if you hope to be a juggler. And the same is true for mathematics. If you want to succeed at mathematics and do well in this course, you have to spend a lot of time actively doing mathematics. Now this might seem strange because I've got so many hundreds of videos posted online, but the truth is that watching a video or reading a textbook is a very passive thing, or at least it often can be seen that way, where people feel like you can just sort of lean back and just watch the instructor perform mathematics for you. This is not the case. You need to be actively doing mathematics. You need to be thinking about it. You need to be thinking, well, why does this work? How can I apply it in different situations? What kind of test problems might there be? So everywhere you're going in this course, I encourage you to be actively thinking about it, not just passively consuming the content. The next point is that you should try to think deeply about the concepts. This is not just a checklist of things that you have to do. I create structure for you. I've got videos and quizzes and practice problems and homework problems, and I create all of this structure so that you're actively thinking about the content. However, it is up to you to do this in a deep and conceptual way. So if I give you a new concept, you should be trying to understand, well, why was that defined this way? How does this concept apply in different situations? How can I move forward with this particular concept? You want to be going as deeply as possible. And a lot of that is on you. I'll introduce the concepts in the videos, but you're the one who has to really try to wrestle with them and actively think about them and focus on the concepts and not just the answer, not just what the solution is, but why does the solution work? Point number three is to be as socially interactive as possible. When you're communicating with other humans, this is a very high level form of learning. It's very effective for crystallizing your knowledge. Often in a face-to-face -face class, I teach so-called flipped classrooms where all of my students are working on mathematics in groups, but the idea is that a student can communicate between different students or you can communicate between a student and an instructor, and when you have to sit there and you have to think about what exactly do I mean so you can articulate your question, or how do I try to explain something to one of my colleagues, when you go to that level of learning, you tend to have very high levels of retention and have really crystallized what you know and what you don't know that you need to keep working on. So I create opportunities in my online course for the students to interact with each other and to interact with me, and I would suggest take as much advantage of those as possible because that is an incredibly effective form of learning. Okay, so suppose you have been thinking actively, you've been working on the concepts, you've been interacting with your peers. Well, how do you know whether this is working? The next point is called self-assessment. And the reality is that a lot of us, myself very much included, are kind of bad at accurately assessing the state of our own learning. Indeed, one of the most common things I hear from students on midterms is, I thought I worked so hard, I thought I knew so well, how did I only get a C or how did I not even pass? And part of the issue is that students are not particularly good, for very reasonable reasons, at assessing how good their learning is. So I want you to be active about that. When you're doing the homework, treat that as a self-assessment. Try to see whether you can do it without having to say clone a problem from the book or get help from a friend. See whether you have the capability yourself and be honest about it and take a record of what you understand and what you don't. Now, if you find out that there's things that you don't understand, you've gone and you've done your self-assessment and you find that there's some concept you're really struggling with, get help. 
There is a ton of help available. It's not just all the different resources like the videos in the textbook, but you can always talk to me, you can talk to your colleagues, there's the Mass Support Center, you can go all times through the day and try to get extra help. Don't leave problems lingering. If something is confusing, get a resolution to it and use the resources both online and in person that are available to you. The next point is something about your mindset. There's something in mathematics and all types of learning called a growth mindset. And, and basically it says, look, you have the ability to conquer this particular material, to develop and to grow in your mathematical reasoning ability. For reasons I don't fully understand as a mathematician, an enormous number of people in society believe that they're fundamentally bad at math or that they, math is just really hard thing that they're not going to be able to do. And all of the research I've ever seen and all of my experience with thousands and thousands of students is that this is just not true, that students have the ability to master these courses and that being so-called bad at math is not some true state like the fact that you've got brown hair. You can change that. And then one of the weird things that comes out of the research is that students that have growth mindsets, even if like initial test scores are bad, that they perform better, that having this positive mindset changes how you interact with the course and allows you to succeed. So I would encourage you to think very positively, you have the opportunity to succeed and let your habits in the class reflect that. Final point, and I'm putting this at the end because it's the one you probably already know, but it's the one you're probably worst at, which is you need to work hard. Look, if this is a face-to-face -face course, there'd be hours a week where you'd be expected to go to class. You should spend that same amount of time doing the basic foundational learning. And then after class, you'd expect to be doing homework, and that is more time again. You should expect there to be a really solid amount of work for this particular course. And don't just leave it all to the last minute. It, we learn most effectively when we space our learning out over time. And that's partly why I structure my course the same way I do, where there's a gap between when the videos are due and the practice problems are due and when the homework is due is because you need to hit them multiple times. Don't just leave it all to the last minute. So have realistic expectations about what the amount of effort is going to be taking in this course. And I would leave you with this final thought. This is, for the moment, your job. You are a professional student. Your objective is to get a good grade in my course. So treat it as if it is a profession. Work hard at it. Try to think about what are effective habits so that you can start implementing them now and succeed over the course. In short, be a pro. All right, so I hope all those different tips are going to be useful for you and that you will indeed succeed in your online math courses. And finally, I'm just going to leave you with two different videos that might be of interest. I've got one on how to watch math videos effectively. I've got one on how to do online homework effectively. You can check both of those out as well.